A former Dallas Cowboys player on trial for the drunk driving death of a close friend and teammate. Josh Brent is facing as many as 20 years in prison, but the defense is denying that he was even intoxicated. ABC's Gio Benitez has a story for us. They seemed inseparable, college pals who would later play for the Dallas Cowboys together. But this morning, one is dead. The other is charged with intoxication manslaughter. Josh Brent, known for menacing quarterbacks, could face, if convicted, 20 years in prison for the 2012 death of teammate Jerry Brown. Brown was the passenger the night Brent crashed his Mercedes. Number one. There's a car in the middle of the road on fire upside down. Police dash cam video shows the overturned car still smoking. First responders here are attending to Brown, who later died. And here is Brent during a field sobriety test where police say he couldn't recite the alphabet and admitted he had a buzz going on. In opening arguments Monday, prosecutors used that video to illustrate the basis of their case, that Brent's blood alcohol level was more than twice the legal limit. The district attorney saying the blood does not lie. But Brent's attorney told jurors that the 320-pound former lineman could safely drink more than most people, saying Josh Brent is as big as a house. He was guilty of being stupid and driving too fast, but he was not drunk. Size as a defense? The doctor we spoke to says it doesn't add up. One's impairment has absolutely nothing to do with their size and weight and height. As for Brent and Brown, the two were said to be like brothers. It can't get any tighter than those two. Even Brown's mother says she has forgiven Brent, but prosecutors say that doesn't change the facts. They claim receipts prove Brent bought several cocktails and three bottles of champagne that night. Brent has pleaded not guilty. And Brent reportedly told police he shared that liquor with friends at a nightclub. Meanwhile, the police report from that night also says Brent had been driving with an expired and suspended license, Robin. All right, Gio, thank you. We're going to bring in ABC's chief legal affairs anchor, Dan Abrams. And let's get right to it. The lawyer using size as a defense. It's not a particularly effective defense because as you heard the expert there, someone who's 300 pounds just has to drink more to get to that same level as someone who's 150 pounds. So once you get that number, that 0.18, that's already incorporated your size. Look, typically when you're in the position he's in, you want to get blood alcohol tests thrown out before the trial. You see that happen a lot because they say it was unreliable, there were various problems, etc. They didn't succeed. They're still trying uh, to, to, to have the jury minimize that, but they're in a tough spot. Yeah, this is a very tough case for the defense. And, and the key, in my view, is sentencing which is, I think they know he's going to get convicted of something here. Mm -hmm. And remember, he's not just charged with intoxication manslaughter. He's also charged with regular manslaughter. So these jurors could decide, you know what? We don't think, let's say for argument's sake, they say we do not think there's enough evidence that he was intoxicated. But we still think he was driving over 100 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. That could be manslaughter, even if they don't think that he was drunk. So when you have a range of probation to 20 years, this jury, which is going to decide the sentence, very unusual. The jury is going to decide the sentence. That's right. So I think that what the defense is doing is playing here for the sentence. They know there's going to be a conviction or certainly suspect it. They're going to try to argue everything they can and hope to get some sympathy in particular because the victim's family members support him. Well, yeah, his mother. His mother has says he has forgiven Brent. She has forgiven Brent. That's and that right. she would like to testify the sentencing. Exactly right. So while her testimony might not be relevant to guilt or innocence, when you're talking about the sentence, her testimony could be very relevant. And I think that that's what this is really all about. Very interesting. All right, Dan, thank okay, you. Rob.